If it comes in this direction, it receives the ink from the printheads. Now, uh, Yehuda is preparing the blanket for receiving the inks. This is done, of course, in the machine totally automatically. And as they come in this direction, they will receive the ink images, and then you'll see the image, and Irina will dry it. Well, first of all, note our very high-tech drying technology here. <laughs> so apart from that, oh, I see the image. You can hardly see anything. There must have been something that went wrong. Never mind. Irina, forgive us. Please transfer whatever you have there, and then we'll try it again and see if we can get some, some real color. Sorry, folks. Okay, transfer, and what do you have there? Wow, that is nanography. And of course, it is completely dry, because it was dry before it was ever transferred. It was dry on the blanket. Now, there's one other thing you're probably asking yourself. Why is it that now you can see it, and before you couldn't? So let's see, who was paying close attention when we talked about nanopigments? Yes, it's the nanopigments. You see, because they have zero scatter, and all they do is absorb the wavelengths you don't want, they transmit the color you want, but then that gets absorbed by the black blanket. So it looks transparent, you can't even see it. And that's why only when it's transferred to paper can you actually see the color. And there's one other thing you might have gotten a, a mistaken impression about, and that is about the pressure required to transfer. See, Irina is using a pneumatically powered cylinder to transfer, so it seems like you require a lot of pressure. Actually, you require zero pressure. All you need is contact, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. The only reason we apply any pressure at all is to make sure the contact is uniform. I'm just going to use the flexural strength of the paper. I'm going to touch it to the blanket. Wherever it contacts, it transfers. Look at this. I can even just lay the corner of the sheet onto the blanket, and wherever it touches, it transfers. So every night I'm just going to transfer what remains. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to transfer what remains. And so this is the end of the lesson about how nanography works. So of course, that's the complete image. That's the end of the lesson, but because it's, it's like magic, I'm sure, just for fun, let's do one more. And this time you can just sit back and uh, no lecturing, you can just appreciate the simplicity and beauty of this process. There, zips across again, again receives the ink image. Again, you can make out that there's something there, but you can't see any colors. Now, again, Irina transfers, and voila, nanography. One last, sure. <laughs> One last thing. Those of you who are offset printers are probably asking yourselves this. With offset printing, I know when I transfer ink from the blanket to paper, about half the ink goes to the paper, the other half remains on the blanket. <clears throat> Excuse me, but that's okay because it's always the same image I'm printing, so it doesn't matter if I have ink left over, but with digital printing, what happens to that other half of the ink? So Irina, please show us the other half of the ink that remains on the blanket and how we deal with it. Of course, zero ink on the blanket, 100% transfer, because the next image is different from the previous one. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the magic of nanography. Irina Yuda, thank you very much for assisting us. So, now let's talk about what all this means for you and for your customers. Let's start with paper. Paper is, after all, the single most expensive part of printing. And what you need to be able to do is to produce brilliant, high-quality color consistently on any paper stock your customer chooses, because it's your customer's choice. And the choice is from hundreds, if not thousands of different stocks. So we've taken five very common paper stocks, and we printed on them both with nanography and with inkjet. First thing I want to point out is the paper stocks range from very high-end 
glossy, expensive coated stocks to uncoated stocks of various types, including a very cheap stock. This is a paper stock used for newspaper inserts, you know, groceries and things like that. The cheapest possible stock. Now what you see, first of all, the nanographic images are all identical, no matter what paper you're transferred to. Why is that? Well, the ink is dried and a final solid image before it even knows what it's going to be transferred to. So it's not influenced, there's no wet ink paper interaction to change the image. So no matter what you transfer to, it's always the same. Whereas with inkjet, of course, you have this wet ink paper interaction. Every paper behaves differently. It absorbs more, absorbs less, wicks more, wicks less. So what you can see here is this beautiful inkjet image on expensive, glossy, specially coated paper. But on other stocks, it fires all over the place. It, and the reason this one is curled is because the inkjet ink contains so much water that in this very lightweight paper stock, it's simply curled. Now the most interesting one of all is this is the dream paper. Cheapest paper stock, <laughs> the dream for any customer to be able to produce spectacular quality on the cheapest of stocks. But how do you explain why this is so washed out? After all, each of these images, by the way, were printed on the highest quality inkjet machines in the market. And every single image received exactly the same amount of ink. So how do you explain this? Some are brilliant and others are washed out. Where did the ink go? Well, in the case of nanography, the ink is all on the surface. So, of course, there's zero strike through even this very thin, lightweight paper. With inkjet, however, if it's not on the surface, where is it? Of course, it penetrates deep into the paper, limiting the capability of that technology to be consistent, high quality on a broad range of stocks. So ladies and gentlemen, that, that says it all. And now I'd like to just summarize. Nanography appears today to be penetrating, to be pervading mainstream markets, commercial printing, packaging, and publishing. And that's where our focus is. And we will continue to improve monography to make it, as one of our customers said, faster, better, cheaper. But one day, monography will also affect, impact, pervade all printing markets. Corrugated, labels, metal printing, even textile printing. And I have to tell you, it is so clear today that the future of print is going to be, is already becoming digital. And I personally, I am thrilled down to my bones of the contribution that my company, Land of Digital Printing, is making to help lead this industry into the digital age. Ladies and gentlemen, I very much thank you. Before you leave, I want to ask each of you a question, a very personal question, but I can't do it obviously, there are 300 and something people here. So instead I will put it up on the screen in just a couple of moments. So please wait until you see the question and ask yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much. Thank you all very much.